Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode seven of the Noved Notes podcast. I'm your host, Noved Player, and this is where we talk about VR chat creators, content creators, world builders, and many more types of creators inside of VR chat. And with me today, I have the legendary, <laughs> the legendary world creator, him- you. <laughs> the legendary world creator himself, Chopau. Welcome to the Noved Notes podcast. I hope you're doing okay. <laughs> I know. I knew damn well. Okay, the, the before doing this, I was like, I have a feeling like when he introduces me, I have, why in the back of my head do I feel like he's gonna pull that one out? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I had to do it for the meme. You, you know, you know, if I didn't meme on you, I, you don't, you know, you, you know, I love you because I meme on you. Um, a bunch of my other guests and friends can say that too. Um, but yeah, welcome, show pal. Um, you know, so for those uh. In the general listening audience, um, you know, give them a brief description of who you are and what you do. All right. So um, my name is Chopal. Uh, I am a VR chat enthusiast, world creator, VR photographer. Uh, I'm a 3D environmental designer for a studio. I own a fan club and a group, and I'm a two-time Spookality winner and all that cool stuff. Yeah, it's uh, just a yeah. Summary of what I do. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. You know, so you currently, uh, at the current moment, you have about 18 uh, public worlds out. Um, all fantastic experiences, by the way. I highly recommend, you know, if you play VR chat and you're listening, definitely go check it out. Um, so let's let's talk about the worlds, you know, in particular. You know, actually, before we even get into the worlds, you know, what inspired you to create? worlds you know create environments inside of vr chat so before i ever like even introduced or touched vr chat i used to be um del i delved heavily into a minecraft the, the, the good old block game that uh, everybody knows of and um over time i tried doing uh, redstone and i was like damn i suck at this so I was like, okay, let's build, let's uh, let's do a building and stuff. Let's build a house, build my first dirt house and all that stuff. And I was like, I like this. This is this is nice. I remember building my first house and it was inside of a, a cave because I was too I was too scared. I was too much of a pussy to go outside because there's creepers outside. <laughs> and like for those who are like who are veteran players, you know damn well how scary to be their first night is in in Minecraft. But yeah, over time, um, playing in servers and uh, communities and stuff. Um, I started taking an interest in uh, building, and after that, after some years passed, I was like, you know what? I somebody a friend of mine actually contacted me a long, long, long time ago, and he's like, yo, I'll uh, I'll give you some uh, some money to help me uh, build this uh, spawn, and he's like, I'm like, what? You're telling me I can make money doing this? And uh, and he's like, yeah, people do that. They're called commissions. I was like, what? Okay, I gotta you gotta tell me about this. Yeah, an 11 year old Joe Powell's like, what? I never knew about this. <laughs> so uh, that that followed after like seven years of like doing professional building on Minecraft, helping with like community servers, YouTubers, all that stuff. It was it was pretty much a pretty uh, it was a pretty strong art I had. And um, when I was introduced to a VR chat in uh, 2017, I think it was the day when uh, it came out on Steam, February 1st, 2017. I remember it. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And then over time, I was like making friends, like everybody, like what people usually do. And I tried doing avatars. God damn, no one, like two people out of my entire friends list have seen my avatars. And there's a reason why I do worlds, man. I can't do, I can't do <laughs> avatars. Just like Redstone, I can't do avatars. And I was like, you know what? Let's do, let's do uh, worlds. And then that's when the, that's when the, the, the skills from Minecraft leached over to Unity. And I was like, oh. This is like Minecraft, but without with more than just cubes and blocks. I have more responsibility to deal with and having to deal with an old system called Unity and a SDK that loves to fuck you over sometimes and hardware limitations. And you're like, oh, OK, this is this is this is fine. It's like that one meme with the with the dog in this house and it's burning <laughs> and it's on flames like this is fine. And yeah, pretty, then, and, pretty much. And here we are. As somebody who's dabbled a little bit in Unity, I can I can definitely uh, you know I, I I can definitely relate to that Unity struggle. Um, 
Now, when it comes to like Blender, nah, you got me. You lost me. Like I could never do Blender work. Um, well, ne never say never, oh, but never say never. <laughs> but like I can't bring myself to a lot the time for it. <laughs> you know, it's definitely a whole different ball game. So specifically with Unity, do you make everything in Unity, or do you use like the Blender side as well? Okay, so this is this is where it gets like really in depth. So when I make a world or make, like upload a world, most of the time it'll be like okay, so I'll, I'll just go chronologically or in chronological order. So I started making worlds in around like beginning of May, like May first, twenty twenty two. And I was like, okay, this is fine. Uh, I had a, actually had a friend who uh, I helped work with uh, for his world. Uh, his name was uh, Templar, TWK Templar. He's a very, very nice friend of mine. I haven't talked to him in a while, but he's, he's an amazing bean. And uh, I was helping him make this um, rocket jumping world. And I was like, yo, this is, this is fun. You can, see, you can see like Pro Builder, you can see all this stuff. And then when I started doing, uh, when I started to make my own first world, <laughs> it's like when you make your own dirt house in Minecraft, it was really bad. I asked him for help and uh, there's a, there's a, it was a, it was a big shock. It was a nice slap in the face. Like I had to help, uh, I had to do my, um, reorganize stuff and then learn how to do things more efficiently, learn how to do lighting and all that. Like the fundamentals of making a world, like optimizing making the lighting making sure everything's rendered setting the spawn all the the the, the skeleton of how a, a world functions there's that and then it was just like going on the unity store and then like okay let's see what free items are there what things we can buy and then like help other uh, help other creators too and then after that we about pumped out more worlds sometimes i'll use like a demo scene or like a scene that for an example but like I can I can do it from scratch, but like I can't because of my hardware limitations. Like a lot of the things that I do would be from like a scene or something that we can build with assets. But um, recently, uh, beginning of this year, or actually I can't remember if it was end of last year, but I recently started doing a lucid dream project. Like where, because for me, I I'm a lucid dreamer. I've been doing that for about fourteen years, and I wanted to. Uh, express that in in the shapes of worlds and i was like okay um there's this one lucid dream that i had a long time ago and i wanted to uh, illustrate that into a world it obviously is not going to be accurate to 100 percent because there's like the stuff that udon cannot do that unity cannot do and it, it's when you have a 10 year old laptop it's like i can't there's not much i can do i would like to do but and learn but not right now <laughs> And uh, there's four. There's four of them that are out right now, and I show some friends. Uh, I show friends around the, the 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 lucid dream worlds, and they're like, "Oh god damn, this is like, this is what you lucid dream?" I'm like, "It's like as accurate as possible." But that the, the that project is more of like from the ground up. Like I'll use assets and stuff if I need like certain like assistance, whether it's like a model or like programming or developing, because I am I can't do everything. I'll I'll ask a friend and. Uh, they're they're very nice people. Yeah, no, absolutely. And yeah, that's like it's pretty much the that's pretty much how stuff is structured. Fair enough. So you know, we went over like in that process. You know, let's go into some of the more recent stuff. You know, with you making these giant environments and different types of worlds. You know, what is there like a is there like a lore to the worlds, or is it just based off just pure like visual speculation? Glad that you ask, and this is this is where it gets uh, the the people who are listening who are like lore hungry who will love to know the stories and connections behind worlds. Oh, I gotta yeah, I gotta sit back for this one. So <laughs> before I started making uh, worlds, there's uh, when I was in high school, I was like I was a, a math nerd and stuff like that, but I was more uh, I was more math oriented uh, oriented than English, and over time. And that shifted because math hard, okay? I can't believe I could just sit there and look at the alphabet on the whiteboard and be like, I can solve that. Like, I look back to that now, I'm like, how the fuck did it? How, 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 how do I do that? Like, I, I, don't, I don't understand how to do that. <laughs> but when I look at, like, a dictionary or, like, I read a book by Shakespeare, I'm like, oh, okay, I, I see what they mean by that, all that imagery and stuff. So with that, with those skills in mind in the arts, I wrote this story. Well, it's still, it's still like, ongoing, still writing it, like... I'm working on a world and then writing the story or vice versa. 
but basically i wrote this uh, story that shapes um in a way that it shapes how i live like what i've gone through in the personal life and illustrate in a way in a fictional story so then it looks like a completely it, it looks like a story that's something that you would read out of a book but when you take the morals uh, like when you take the moral of the story in different scenes those are actually portrayed as different times of my life where i've had something good happen something bad happen a change in uh something where it's like something that's personal emotional uh, financial something to deal with family or friends but it's designed in a way it's it's structured in a way and formed as a uh as a story and like for example uh one part in the story is like it talks about this king and the queen that reflects that um reflects to a relationship that i had with somebody and another story another part of the story talks about a group of people who go through this adventure in the real world that reflects to my um what's, what's the word uh my experiences being through different friend groups and having close friends and uh like more distant friends and how people just come and go and I have it shaped in a way, a lot, a lot of big brain stuff, a lot of thinking, put on your thinking cap. Um, but it, it's a lot of it's a lot of work when it comes to trying to um, portray something as a fictional sense that reflects off of a, a real life um, scenario. But yeah, there's a lot of like in terms of like lore and story, people get like very um, they're like, oh, I can't believe you d did this or that because like. And it's, on, it's another, like, smart thing in terms of, like, assets and stuff because sometimes things cost a lot of money and it's always nice to recycle things and reuse it. And somebody came up to me a long time ago and I was like, yeah, it, it's kind of big brain. Why not, it, it, in a way of trying to recycle assets and use them again, just, like, the way I do it is, like, I have, like, this, uh, like, let me just take something, for example. Like, in one of my worlds, Cherry Serralada, there's this uh, ruined portal. And in uh, the asset for that, I also use that in other worlds that are that, that have been released after that. It's the same exact asset, and it's just being recycled. But in the way it is being used, is for the story. So it's kind of like smart. It's like, oh, I could just use this and just say, oh, it's just um, it's just a connection to the story. Well, it technically is, but it's just another smart way of saying to uh, reusing and saving money. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's fair. You know, reusing reusing assets for a story premise, you know, it definitely has its perks because you can you can expand on your story by making references to past assets, you know, which is definitely yeah. definitely beneficial. Um, you know, out of, you know, with how many with how many worlds you do have, uh, you know, a total of like 18 public ones, uh, not including commissions, are they all, is there, is it all one storyline or is there like maybe one or two storylines or is it just all connected? They're, okay. Now this is where I start this, um, reveal some, uh, secrets, uh, about this story. So I've, I've, I've kept like, I'm very secretive when it comes to story and stuff. I'm, I'm, uh, when it comes to hiding Easter eggs and secrets and lore, uh, induced things in my, um, my worlds, mm -hmm. I like to hide them very hard and be very clever about it. So um in terms of the entire like all the worlds that i have out except for the bedroom world which was my first world like there's not there's no lore behind that there's no story behind that it was my dirt house okay people still <laughs> come to me sometimes and be like please tell me your bedroom love please tell me your bedroom world is a part of the story i'm like no 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 it's not it's just me to understand how community works and i it was <laughs> i go back to it i'm like god damn <laughs> But yeah, all of the all of the worlds that I've uploaded are all connected through one story. I mentioned that through the Lucid Dream uh, project that I had, which is like a side, like a second project, it's actually connected in a way to the main story. Because in the story, uh, it, it in terms of the environment, it switches back and forth from, from the real world and the dream world. And when you connect that with the loose dream project that I've been work that I'm that I'm ongoing working on with, those actually serve as scenes of uh, lucid dreams for the for the main character at a certain point of the story. So when I mentioned that, um, when I mentioned to friends that are like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be doing this new project, it's PC only, 
So it's going to suck for the... Uh, I know I have a lot of friends who are questies, and I'm like, I understand the struggle. But, like, lucid dreams have no boundaries, and P having to be PC only is... The, that's the only reason why. Like, it's very... It's nearly impossible to make something quest compatible that can illustrate a, a lucid dream uh, perfectly. But in terms of, like, connecting everything together, it's all connected to one story. Interesting. We'll definitely have to do some uh, lore hunting, <laughs> to say the least. Um, I, I've definitely seen, I've definitely seen quite a bit of your worlds. I just never, I guess I never just went into them, you know, thinking of an entire storyline. Um, you know, so it just gives more reason to go to the worlds, you know, which is amazing. So with it being all one storyline, is there a theme to said story, or is it just you know related to things that have happened IRL, like? I guess to give the listeners kind of a more um, linear spectrum to look at rather than the broad spectrum of all the worlds, is there like a, like one theme that kind of overall like describes the theme of like the lore of the worlds? Um, yeah, that's a deep question. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably just like experiencing someone's life through an illustration of a story, a fictional story. Because when you take when you take the um when you take the moral or the meaning behind something, like where let's say for example, uh, a group of side characters gets together and they actually start this whole side character story arc in the story and they go do their own spin-off show, their own movie, their own books and all that stuff. When you think about it, it's just in a way, you can view it as like how when you go into school and you meet like new friends, you meet these new people and you make friendships and then you make this friend group and then you graduate, you go through all the stages and milestones of life. It's just shaped in a way so that it, it look, it's kind of camouflaged in a way, but when you really think about it in a, in a storytelling way, it's like, God damn, this is, this is deep. <laughs> <laughs> so like in terms of like in, in the story, like, there are a lot of high points to it, which are like the, the achievements and stuff like that I've, I've done. And a lot of low points that are very dark and very um, graphic, in, in a sense, when you think about it. Because uh, you, you, don't know what's going, you don't know what's happening to someone's life until you like, talk to them and get to know them a lot. Because like, like when you're walking down the street and then you see all these people who, are, who have like, their own things going on with their own lives, you don't know what's going on. Like, you might think that they're just ignoring you or just don't give a fuck. But, like, to be honest, in this day and age in 2024, we're all dealing with shit, man. <laughs> we're all struggling. <laughs> Facts. No, absolutely. No. <laughs> every every single person. No, it doesn't matter where you're from, who you are, what you are. Like, everybody be dealing with that struggle in this day and age. And it's, it's unfortunate, yeah. you know. But it it goes to show, you know, who's real and who's not and that's something that i always consider when meeting new people and you know yeah because you got to realize you know everybody has problems you know it's it's how they deal with them that makes them who they are you know at least at least in my opinion you know and obviously there's a whole broad spectrum of problems in you know one individual's life you know, some may take it better than others, you know, some may not, you know, so to experience oh, it, yeah, for sure. you know, to experience it in the sense, you know, through a virtual metaverse, per se, it's, it definitely can make someone, um, I guess empathetic would be the word to like broadly yeah. understand. Yeah. Words are hard. <laughs> Math and words are hard. No, um, I get that. I, I get that too. <laughs> English is not easy. Yeah, yeah. You've been you've been doing worlds for you know for a while now. What is like the one thing when it comes to world creation as in general? What's a common like issue that you go through when creating a world? <laughs> okay. <laughs> every time I <laughs> every time I upload a world. I always double check, triple check my hierarchy. Okay, I got all my static objects set, all my dynamic objects set, all my toggles, my lighting, my reflections, my de my dependencies on my UI, everything. I have it. I double check, triple check, check check it all again. I upload it. 
It all runs fine. I test it multiple times. I get friends to test it multiple times. And something's going wrong. So there's a bug somewhere. There's always something wrong that happens. It's not a show power world unless it's like something going, something bad is happening. There has to be a bug somewhere. So like, when it comes to worlds, like, <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like getting heated in my own mind right now. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> so, what... <laughs> so, so what is one common issue when it comes to like world creation? Um, bugs. Yeah, yeah, uh, bugs. Uh, yeah, so you pretty bugs, much answered it. Something's not rendering right. Um, right. Bugs, something, something's not rendering right. Um, compiling scripts, so there's like a script error, and then you're like, oh my god, what the fuck do I do? And then you open up the console, and there's like 30 different uh, red texts, and you're like, okay, uh, how, how do I fix this? I click on it. Visual Studio opens up. Oh no! I don't like that scary Visual Studio. I don't like programming. I can't code. Okay, I can't even do a redstone. <laughs> like no. <laughs> yeah. Like no. So like one takeaway when one one of the hard things about like world building is like just make sure that your stuff works or, or like make sure the stuff that you're using works. It, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to like ask for help. And like ask somebody for help, like when it comes to programming stuff, because like personally, like growing up, um, I I would I've been raised in a, in a Filipino household, and being in an Asian household, you're le- you're you're forced to learn how to do things like on your own, basically. Because from where we from, I I'm born I'm from Canada, and I don't know what it's like being back in my hometown in the Philippines, but I know damn well it's people struggle a lot. And I'm grateful and I'm very, uh, very like lucky to be where I'm at. So like having to um, deal with all the struggle and having to do it all on my own, it, it, it's, it does something to a motherfucker. Like having to learn how to do something and change like a line of code or something and having to step out of your shell to like ask for help. It's, it opens up your eyes to be like, damn, I, that actually, that's, that's really nice. Like, it's nice to do everything by yourself to understand how to do it and to get your hands dirty. But when it gets to the point and to the extent of like, okay, I really cannot do this. Like, I need to like ask for external help. Whether it's like a, whether it's like a, a friend in Discord or maybe like that that Indian science teacher that needs to help. You need help for your chemistry homework or something like that. Like, it doesn't. No one's gonna judge you when you ask for help or reach out for help. Yeah. No. I mean, that's. <laughs> Ironically enough, that's one of my philosophies when it comes to VR chat, you know, um, and I think you can kind of relate on this in a, uh, pretty much in a similar way. You know, if it wasn't for, you know, the people I've met in the community, you know, um, or, you know, in VR chat in general, I would not be where I am today. Oh, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Man. Like, if it wasn't for VR chat, like, I... <sighs> Where would I be? I would probably be doing. I'd probably get my degree by now, but like I would probably be working a nine to five. Like I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing a nine to five, but like uh, it's that's not what I typically want to aim towards. Like I would probably be more uh, introverted, more um, more uh, closed off and stuff like that. I'd probably still be doing like arts, but like not to this level of degree. Like if I if. If the, if the show about 10 years ago were to see what they're doing right now, they're like, God damn! <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's definitely, you know, one of those things. And I, it's funny because I use that same metaphor, um, granted, not 10 years ago, because I have only been on the platform for, you know... I mean, if you had told me before I even got VR, like, hey, you got VR and this is where you're at, like, no, I wouldn't have believed you flat out. You know, <laughs> it's... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's definitely one of those things, um, you know, and you mentioned some names earlier, you know, if you had to take, take a wild guess, cause I know the number is pretty large, but like how many people, like I said, take a guess, uh, how many people in your estimation have helped you, you know, since you've started VR chat? <laughs> One? No, I'm just kidding. The, um, <laughs> I know for a fact somebody. I'm what that my friend's a friend of mine is gonna laugh at that fucking uh, inside joke. But uh, how many people um, helped me on VR chat? You yeah, said? like since you started to now. It, just take a random guess. Not random. Try to make an estimated. Guess. That's a 
Mm, you're gonna i'm like having a jimmy neutron neuron firing <laughs> mode right now in my head like oh man that's like oh man probably in like probably a thousand probably at a least thousand. a thousand two thousand yeah, yeah that... because like every interaction counts like just saying hi to somebody like can lighten somebody's day like mm. you don't know what that person like as i said earlier like you don't know what somebody is going through in their life like and just interacting with somebody and saying hi to them and just talking to them about their day or stuff like that. Just that interact, that human interaction. That's why it's called VR chat and not VR, VR mirror, mirror dwell. But like just chatting with people is like it. It's it's something that humans do all the time. Like it's hardwired into our brains to just communicate and talk with people. Like when you're born onto this earth, like the first thing you see is like your mom and your dad. Or maybe just like it's just a human being and growing up, you interact with people. Whether like if you, even if you're mute or deaf or blind or whatever, you interact. And I think that's the common giveaway and exposure that shapes somebody. And when you're on VR chat, it's pretty much a second reality. And it still functions the same way, the same like hierarchical like perspective, the same social like trends and stuff. In a way, it shaped in VR chat. Like you have mirror dwelling, you have all like these different uh, avatars like being used. You have all these trends on TikTok and stuff. In a way, it's our own culture, but it's still the same thing when you reflect it back to real life. And it's still the same thing when you interact with somebody. And it the people that I've interacted with definitely helped change me into a, a better person I was before. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'd say like me personally, like I'd say it was definitely within like definitely a couple hundred. Um, but granted, you've been doing it longer than I have, so it, obviously yours is going to be bigger than mine in that case. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, with, without the people I've worked with, like, this podcast wouldn't exist. You know, the graphic design work that I've done, you know, for other communities, that wouldn't have been done. Like, yeah, I taught myself Photoshop, but to mm-hmm. to have the experiences that I've had in this platform, VR Chat is all about the the community realistically yeah you know, you'll have your memes you'll have your shit posts you'll have your awesome visual worlds your music experiences but without the people inside the platform what is this game exactly yeah shout out metaverse dgen for that quote well somewhat similar to that quote love you guys anyway um <laughs> hi but- raptor hi lion i'm on nova notes <laughs> <laughs> they they said that on one of their episodes and that's that's a that's another one of those like you know big things that i also believe in you know without the without the people this game wouldn't be the same which is why it's always deterring to hear you know you know like when eac came out and it like took a lot of people off the platform oh yeah you know, and, i remember that yeah you know back back in that day and it's it's unfortunate, you know, and now like the, the most common denominator when it comes to the player base, it's, you know, surprisingly, it's not PC players. It's quest players. Quest players are more majority on this platform than PC players, you know, and that's that I'll, I'll even put the stats right here from exactly when this episode was recording, you know, it, it there's a huge difference in number, um, you know, so it's definitely crazy to think about you know how this platform has grown you know it's had its downsides you know all all games and yeah. social media platforms do you know but there's still hope you know with with how many people are logging into vr chat every day you meet new people all the time you know uh whether it's friends of friends or you know group events group public instances you know, there's not a day where you can't physically go out and meet a new person, which is a good thing. Um, unless, you know, you don't like people, which is like 90% of the platform. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> um, you hate people, so you go to the VR chat to meet people. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's shaped in E-boys, E-girls and uh, booth babes and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, like all those, you know, Uganda knuckles and brush kids, and yeah, no, we, oh god, mm-hmm. that that could be a whole entire context in itself. 
Um, but you know, back back into you know back into your world specifically, you know, there's different types of aesthetics. Is there like, do you use like references for a certain type of like you know visual imagery or you know what what inspires the? Because we talked about the lore side, but I'm more curious about like the visual side. You know, what inspires the theme of your worlds? Or is it kind of hand-in-hand with the lore? So It goes hand-in-hand with the lore, and it also goes, like, vice versa, right? But, like, in terms of, like, references and visuals, like, I'll either use, like, a demo scene, I'll make a drawing, I'll, like, look on, like, Google Images, even though it, it, it does sound like, uh, it does sound, like, pretty, like, eh, but, like, it does work! And, like, sometimes I'll use, like, AI or stuff like that, or maybe I'll just, like, go out, like, um one time um there's this this is one world i'm going to be working on in the future it's a part of the the story and it's it takes place in like a, a green area it's like kind of like a jungle but in like a bird like a forest jungle kind of ish like amalgamation sorts of things um last summer i actually went to uh went to uh the the west side of uh, canada to visit my aunt and uncle and I spent time with them for about a week and we went out to like the wilderness and stuff like that and I took a lot a lot of photos and I was like this is, I, this would be really good for reference pictures like I've never done something like that before and I know for a fact like there are there there, there are jobs out there like in the game industry where it's like you actually have you can go out to like different parts of the world take pictures take reference mod, like pictures and actually like post it onto like like well, what's it called again? Photo geometry or something like that, where you just take oh pictures of stuff and actually put it onto a mesh, and then you can actually like there's there are worlds there are a lot of worlds in VRChat that are like that. Like one of for one for instance is uh my friend uh our friend Reth Reth Sogan uh Reth Sogan VT on Twitch um he uh, showed me this one world called Wano Park and it's a park in Japan and here's the here's the here's the catch it's photo geometric so it's pretty much one to one scale but Instead of it being like solid, like square meshes and stuff, it's all dots. They're all like it's stippled. It's dots, and it's crazy because it's so well optimized, and there's not even like lighting for it because all the dots are different colors that are supposed to give an illusion of the place that's supposed to be structured. And it's even smarter too because like in terms of lighting, what do you do with the lighting? Okay, just use a a, a brighter shade of blue or something. You're like, that's big brain. You don't even need to accept the lighting. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's crazy. Like, I've never seen such a unique world like that. Like, oh my God, I'm like lost. In, I'm like, my mind is like lost right now after thinking about that. <laughs> but yeah, like in terms of like references and stuff, like in, it could be like a drawing, it could be like a demo scene. It could be like, like going outside and just seeing something, taking pictures of it, or just seeing how other people structure their things and getting inspiration. That's a big one. That's a very big one. Because a lot of people who do game environments and stuff are heavily influenced by past games. Like, uh, I've been told that a lot, of, uh, a lot of the worlds that I do give like a Breath of the Wild feel or uh something like firewatch in fact it's funny because the assets oh, some of the assets that i use are actually used in firewatch because they they're made by the same company <laughs> but yeah like it just inspiration and just visualization and just thought process creativity and all that stuff i mean like if even if you don't have like the creative thought process it's not like that strong for somebody who's trying to like get started with worlds like just look at like reference pictures. What what do you like that relates to art? Do you, is there, like a drawing? Is there a painting? Is there is there like of like it doesn't even need to be a visual. Like is there music that you like listening to? Is there something that affects you in a way? How can you illustrate that into a world or an avatar or anything really? But in in this case, at worlds like let's let's take like some random example. Of, uh, let's take some something for example like you you, you go outside. And then you go to the park and there's an ice cream truck and then you grab a piece, you, you buy a piece of ice cream and you fucked up and dropped it on the floor and now you feel sad and you're depressed. How am I going to, uh, huh, in, in my perspective, how am I going to illustrate that, that sadness of like, oh my god, I dropped my ice cream that cost like fucking five bucks because of inflation. I would just go into Unity, I can like make a scene that's like takes place in a park. Um, and then I could put like a few like NPCs here and there and our uh, like trees here and there. But how can I symbolize the emotion of sadness? I could make the world blue. I can make the world dark. It could take place at night. 
I could put if I really wanted to be like very brutalist right now, I could just put a giant like <laughs> ice cream cone in the sky that just acts like a meteor and just blows up the entire world. Like hell, you, like you could you could go like extreme with the extents, but like how can you how can you um, portray a feeling? Because if you look at it, world building, avatar creating, all the stuff that we're doing here, it's an art. The, the, the platform that we are on is a art, and culture is also an art. So how can we take that, and how can you take that experience or that feeling that you personally uh, experience and illustrate that to the public? That's how I look at things when it comes to references and how I structure my worlds. Whether it's the usage of like assets that are made already, or if it's the usage of like help from others, whether it's like programmed, or if it's like modeled for me, or if it's like if I need help, if I need like to collaborate with somebody, or just ask for help, or just put myself into monk mode and figure out, okay, how the hell does this work? Do some research? Yeah, I'll do research. Like I go to university. That's like literally what we do all the time. <laughs> so, but yeah, like just finding ways to help assist. Um, your tools or your way of making something to show it to the public. That those are that's uh, that's what I do at least. <laughs> no, I mean that's that's super poetic. I mean realistically, you know, and, and you said it the best. You know what we do in this platform, it's art. You know, and I'm not talking to you mirror dwellers. I do absolutely nothing but sit in front of a mirror. I'm talking to the actual creators of VR chat. Um. Anyway, <laughs> hey, I mean, like, hey, mirror dwellers. Mirror dwelling is an art. Like, you, you get to you get to just sit in front of a mirror and experience what you're. Because, like, like, when you think about it, like, when you go in front of the mirror, a lot of people, and I can relate to this personally too. Like, how like how many times have you like woke up looking for, like yourself in the mirror and be like, God damn, I I wish I could change this or that about myself. And VR chat, like, I I I'll give it to them. Like people who mirror dwell, I, I do it. I, I do it as well. And like you just look at yourself in the mirror, and especially when you're in VR, the experience is completely different. Like you just look at yourself, you see like even if you have, like, especially when you have a uh, full body tracking and all that, like you just see yourself. Oh, excuse me, you see yourself in the in the mirror, and it's not who you are physically. It's an avatar. Like it could be like a beanie boy, it could be a brush, it could be a Ugandan knuckles, it could be like some random character from Persona Five. It could be all of this. That I think that's like one of the nice things i like about mirror dwelling is that like you could just appreciate and just be in the zone looking at yourself well, quote unquote yourself <laughs> okay you know what that's, and that's fair. an art as well that you know what that's yeah. fair i i mm. i'll take half <laughs> of it back did i sway your perspective <laughs> now <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll take half of it back I'll, I'll take half of it back um <laughs> but you know uh there are so many different ways to express yourself, you know, like you said, with avatars, you know, with worlds, you know, with creations inside of VR chat, whether it's, you know, um, something like a prefab or an avatar asset, you know, what is like, what is something that inspired, not as a world creator, but as a VR chat player, you know, is there a creator or a certain creation that, you know, maybe helped inspire you to like keep like keep pushing forward in VR chat. Oh man, there's like, oh man, that I'm gonna get me emotional. <laughs> oh damn. Okay. So in terms of like, oh, god damn, now I gotta think about this. Give me like, uh, I should probably be back in like two to three business seconds. Hold on, let me think about this. <laughs> okay. So in terms of like. Starting from scratch, or starting from like the beginning of VR chat, like I honestly didn't know what I was gonna get myself into. Obviously, nobody knows what they're gonna get themselves into in VR chat. Like you can see as many videos as you can, you can see as many references, many worlds, avatars, but you don't fully experience it until you like go into it. I when I first started, I was using regular like random legacy avatars. If you remember those. But and then just like going into a great pog and just seeing how people interact. There was no there was no safety settings. There was no quest kits. There was no EAC. There's none of that. It was just bare bones. And it was just pure socializing. And it was yeah, you'll get like the occasional meme or a shit poster, and it was fun. Like we were, it was like that was like the commodity was to do stuff like that, and it was fun. It was great to do too. And I think 
that part of it really helped push me towards like motivate like motivating myself to like become a better person and like what can i do to make others happy because i think that's a that's one of the main things of why i do what i do because i got it from my mom and i live with her most of my life and from her she puts herself in front of she puts she puts she puts others first before she does and she tries to look after like myself my sister and all of us and i got uh, after growing up on her side of the family I, that kind of like leached onto me and now that's just a major uh part of what i do like how can i how can i take my skills in art and talents and make others happy how can i i i, I will Nine times out of ten, ninety nine percent of the time, except for that point one percent of bacteria that escapes your fucking soap. Um, like I will put others, but I'll put others ahead, or I'll put others first before myself, because like seeing others happy is what really motivates me. And whether it's whether that's like avatars or worlds and stuff, like going through the years of and experiencing like the shit that happened in VR chat, like. Sticking close to the friends that you make and just experiencing and just don't really take every anything. Don't take like well, don't take everything personally. Like there's gonna be some like bumps in the road. There's gonna be a lot of highs and lows in VR chat, but that's just how us. That's just how things are structured. Because as I said before, it's a second reality. Things are structured the same way it is in real life, just in a different perspective with no limitations because it's virtual, right? And we have to we all of us have to find that special goldilocks zone of like okay how am i going to push on with this like you don't even need to be in vr chat like if you if it like it's not meant for everybody of course but like for those who really want to get into it how am i going to like if i was some random person another random person in vr chat how am i i go into i go into vr chat and it's cool i want to continue with this how am i going to push forward with all of this stuff i'm gonna like go into like a, a public world make friends and stuff if i can and i'm too like socially awkward or introverted there are groups out there there are communities out there who are willing to help people like one for example um is this it's a trans academy and, and i'm not trans but i'm friends with a lot of people and i support a lot of friends who are like who, which, who are transition like who are trans and on lgbt like and like not even just in vr chat like i have a lot of friends personally in real like in the real world who are like who are gay lesbian and all that stuff and i'm i'm fully supportive and those kinds of communities are like the ones that you really want to look out for because back then we needed to do everything like just by scratch man like we needed to just fucking get out of the trenches and figure out okay who are you what do you do but do we do we connect? Why is our chemistry good? But nowadays it's easy. All you have to do is just look for a group, just find people. It might take it might take longer than for for some people compared to others. But at a certain point, the lot the stars will align and you'll find that group. Whether if it's a group of friends, a community, just one friend, even like just as I mentioned, just a simple hello and interaction with somebody, it'll change somebody and make them more positive. And the way I illustrate that with my talent is with worlds and like fo maybe photos and just interacting with people and hanging out with people. I go out of my way a lot of the time to just try to make somebody happy, even if it's just a hello. And sometimes that's all it takes, you know? It, mm -hmm. Yeah. And that kind of circle, that kind of takes it full circle into, you know, everyone kind of deals with problems. You know, you don't know what people are going through nine times out of 10, you know, unless you're mm -hmm. particularly involved with that specific person a simple hello or you know hey you know i'm here to talk if you need it you know definitely definitely helps yeah yeah, yeah like the amount of times that i've I'm, oh man this is gonna get like i don't know if you had a podcast interview where it started getting very emotional but like I, i've seen i've seen a few of your pod, i've seen a few of your interviews and it, it's pretty cool but i don't think i've uh i don't think i've seen any uh emotional stuff but like I, I don't know about you, but I know for a fact there's this people, there's, there's viewers out there who've had like losses and stuff. Like the shit that I've experienced, I, I don't say this to boast or to like to brag. Like I'm the, I'm like one of the most humble people you'll know. I think Novin would know. But like, 
having to go through a lot of um changes in vr chat like being a solo a soloistic kind of indi- like creator in, in ways or just being a player a, a solo like an individual player like let's take away like groups and friends and all that stuff just looking at vr chat how it's structured and just seeing how people are treated like like there, there's a lot of good stuff but it's like what Thanos said there's balance to it and there's a lot of bad stuff like I wish there was like there's been so many times in the past where I wish I did certain things differently and if it wasn't if I if I did things differently obviously the world is in the perfect the world is in a perfect place VR chat is in a perfect place nobody's perfect I'm not perfect like I wish that if it's just one thing that I could have changed in the past in terms of like VR chat and you could just you could take this into like the real world too is like if you sense that there's a certain thing that you want to do to help change something it doesn't hurt to attempt it doesn't hurt to try because yeah if you try and it fucks up okay well the, the, it's the effort that counts if you try that's all that mattered or, or if you don't you could you'll just be like you'll just regret that you didn't do something and then the worst comes to worst maybe that person's not there anymore or maybe like something a community is is like corrupted and it just falls apart or maybe just like too much personal issues happen or stuff like that like and if you're if you're on the sidelines like experiencing and witnessing all this stuff like even like you don't have to be the person to always be like jump in and just be the hero of the day like at least like being that person to just like listen but I, I get this a lot from a lot of people who um know me well enough is that having that person to like listen to and to just be that person like that, that shoulder to cry on or someone to listen to vent or rant to personally i i don't like per, like i don't like ranting or venting to people often because like i understand how much of a hassle and how like tedious that, that shit is like there's a certain limit that people can get to mm-hmm. but like experiencing all the stuff in vr chat the most that i can at least do and that i hope a lot of people and people watching this can do is like just keep an eye out for those who are a little bit more distant or or having a rough time and stuff because time is a precious thing and you want to spend as much time as you can on this earth before the inevitable happens because you never know yeah fuck i i couldn't have said that any fucking better actually no that's a wise fucking word and that you know that we might be on vr chat but this applies to real life too you know it it applies to the world you know that that right there that quote right there should be applied to all life you know we're man this is a really fucking like philosophical episode huh was not expecting this <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're, we're going to be talking about fucking life lessons, we're talking about right? we're going to be teaching you your taxes we're going to teach you how to do mortgages <laughs> <laughs> we're going to teach you how to set up a 401k <laughs> yes <laughs> oh my lord yeah no it's it's definitely you know very very wise words you know and that's definitely I hope, you know, people listening, I, I really do hope, at least on my behalf and probably show's behalf too, I hope you take that to heart. You know, that's those are some very wise words to live by. You know. And I've seen some shit the things they did to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I got one more question for you. Cause surprisingly enough, uh, we're actually getting close to the end of the episode. Um Ooh. Yeah, time time has flown, brother. Um, so that was a precious thing, man. <laughs> uh, hey, you know, when, 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 as much of ph- philosophical stuff we've talked about today, like, yeah, it makes sense, you know. So I guess one of the one of the last questions, like, you know, because y- you've been around the VR chat block, you know, is there is there anybody that comes to your mind specifically, you know? Because, like, you've been here for a very long time when it comes to the VR chat platform. You know, into the modern day, is there any creators that, or creations that, like, people should, like, keep an eye on? Oh, man. Um, as much, it's a very base take. But look for, 
in terms of like creators and stuff like stuff like that look at the indie games look at the indie studios look at the small creators look at the people who like like the people who truly put passion in front of money and stuff like that like obviously that can also apply to like bigger like court like um studios and stuff but there's it's so like discriminating in a way that a lot of small creators get pushed aside because they're not doing this or that they're not following the bandwagon they're not doing like following these trends and they're actually they're people who actually like i'm not saying this goes for like everybody i'm saying like for the people who deserve it and it's oh man i i don't know where to where to start with this but like to support your support your local uh, your local creators look your uh, your smaller creators and stuff because it's hard nowadays in the arts to try and find your own style and stuff and having inspiration having taken inspiration from the bigger names and stuff like yeah a, a lot of us do that and how in my at least in my life being a musical person we take a lot of things from music and we take a lot of inspiration from composers and how can we illustrate how can we play that or perform that into our own playing and the way to shape that into this i guess you could say is how can i take this inspiration and this influence from this creator and put it and meld it into my own way and how can i promote that how can i have that move somebody in a, in a way make them feel something and for those creators who do that typically are a lot of those types of creators are not that well like they don't get the, the spotlight that much they, they don't get that much attention like they, that they deserve and like i think that's something that people should uh pay attention to more is like looking or supporting your the smaller creators helping the others because like I, i'm like you can support the big creators and stuff like they have like millions and millions of like followers and stuff but you never know when your friend who has like 10 subscribers on youtube suddenly hits it big and becomes like the biggest name you become more beast mr beastified i hope not but like you know what i mean like I it's 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 something that you want to like look out for and you want to support especially if it's like a friend of yours that's trying to start making videos or do podcasts or like draw or anything really it doesn't even need to be art like if it's something that they want to do like a passion support it and try to at least connect them with like certain people and especially with like for yourself like surrounding yourself with the right people is a very big benefit and if you don't surround yourself with the right people like it's hard too sometimes for some people like you might not realize that you're with the bad people or with the good people you just gotta spend time with them as i mentioned time is a precious thing and you just gotta it's your responsibility to figure out okay how am i gonna do this am i going to is this helping me is this helping others and what's the end goal for this and a lot of the time it's hard for small creators to just keep up with that plan because a lot of people tend to just drop out because they don't see uh, they don't see the persistence they don't see the uh improvement and all that and we need to us as like as an audience and as creators and friends we need to help each other out that's what I, that's at least that's why at least what i do that's why i always stay in the sidelines and so help out with like the smaller creators sometimes i'll like hang out with the bigger ones but like it's it's the intention behind it too right Mm -hmm. no absolutely yeah you know it definitely definitely something i also agree with you know because i've met people both big and small and you know it does at least in my opinion it doesn't matter what your numbers are what you do you know at the end of the day we're all people just trying to have fun on a virtual reality platform mm -hmm. you know it's that's pretty much basically what everyone is you know not not to say oh, hold on yeah. i'm gonna I'm I'm disclaim that real quick there are a small very small percentage of people that you know try to make it a money thing don't do that come on this platform and make friends you know meet cool fucking people like this legendary motherfucker you know 
Okay. 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 <laughs> you gotta, I gotta forbid you. We gotta like put like a new censor word now. Well, the word legendary now. Like every time you say this word, we gotta censor it now. But yeah, no, like I've said it twice. Man, I, <laughs> like, and I don't want to like start beef or or anything like that with certain people. But like, yeah, like it's a lot of people tend to get swayed away just because of money and stuff. And, and this is this is something I say to a lot of like to some people, and it's a lot of people like agree with it. And I'm surprised when a lot of other people also get like shocked. It's like a slap in the face when I say this. But let's take this for example, and I'm. And if you take offense to this, uh, I didn't. I, I didn't uh, do that. that. That was your own. That you just like outed yourself. But let's take two people for example. There's somebody like this. This person who's a smoke creator doesn't make that much money, but they're like the most genuine and the nicest person you have met. Like like a brother or a sister, or whatever. And then sure. the other person, person B, is somebody who's like they have the same qualities, but they're more. They they prefer money more, and they're more corporate. Uh, like focus they'll they will they will purposely drop people or like just try to do things for their own benefit and stuff like and sometimes it may be intentional sometimes it might not be like decisions for both of those people are hard but when you take away all those all of those materialistic things when you take away the money when you take away the like the content and all that you, you're just, just you're just given with two people you're given you're 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 resulting with a really nice person and an asshole when you yeah. think when you take away the materialistic things like if you're gonna think about this in terms of like groups and stuff think about it like what is this person like without like off what is this person like off screen what's this person like without the money all the fame all the content it, it, it's, a, it's a pretty big shock for a lot of people to realize that not a lot not not everybody's the same person they are on camera compared to off camera mm-hmm that's why I try to be like, genuine and like be the same person. Yeah, yeah. Pre preach on that, brother. Preach, on fuck, dude. Uh, too many experiences. Hallelujah. On that. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> fuck it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll wipe my hands just for you, show. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I already know what the title of this is gonna be. It's gonna be uh, uh, philosophies and you know origins of uh. I'll be nice. I won't put legendary world creator. I'll put world creator show pal. You know that well. That facial expression was for that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know it was. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> but we are actually um, at the end of the episode. Speaking of uh, edits and stuff, um, so what I always like to do is, you know, uh, allow the guests to essentially um, promote anything that they're wanting to promote. Uh, whether it's VR chat related, content related, any websites, links that'll be down in the description or on the right, depending on what platform they're on. Um, yes, right that way <laughs> for Spotify. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm a little <laughs> dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, you know, go ahead and just uh, whatever you'd like to promote or share or maybe tease a little bit. This would be your chance. Um. All right. Uh, well, I'll just do uh, the the simple stuff. Uh, follow me on Twitter. It's uh, Shopao VR on YouTube. Shopao VR. I just post little like videos and stuff for like little like trailer videos of worlds. Um, I like to shout out uh, some people. Anti Anti Crest. There's a lot of things that I've like couldn't have done without you. There's Wrath, obviously Novid, uh, Metaverse Tijen. There's a lot of people. A lot of close friends like. Um, I had if I if I go down the list, we're going through my entire friends list, and that's like two thousand <laughs> people. We're not doing that, but you know who you are. Um, but yeah, just like just be not be be kind to one another is is what Ellen would say, even though he's done a lot. She's done a lot of uh, controversial stuff, but off of that thing, like there's a this is quote that I uh, like to follow, um, and it's by uh, it's by uh, this chef Alvin Lung in Master Chef Canada. He said this to uh, the first season uh, winner, uh, Eric Chong, and he said, "Be humble, because if you're not humble, you don't learn." Very, very wise words to live by, bro. This I'm not gonna lie. This episode got very philosophical, and I was not expecting that. I love it. <laughs> it was great. I, I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I enjoyed it. Like that, this is great. Uh, it is fun. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, everyone inside and outside the ballpark, this has been Noved Notes episode seven. 
with Shopo. Um, Shopo, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, it is a blast. You're always you're always welcome. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm great. It's great to be here on the on the podcast. Nova Notes. Go follow him. Go subscribe to him. Or else I'm gonna I'm gonna do some ungodly things in my worlds that you're oh. not gonna never gonna see ever again. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, you, yeah. What he said. <laughs> um, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, uh, and we will see you in the next episode. Also, there is an announcement in the next episode, so make sure to watch that one uh, in regards to future episodes. But we'll see you in the next episode. Peace. Ciao.